What's going on guys, Chad Lannis. I'm going to do a video, uh, probably do this weekly now because vendor roles rotate on a weekly basis. So sometimes you'll have a role that's amazing for one week and the role for that gun could be terrible the next week. I have a lot of experience with this game. I put over 5,000 hours into Destiny and uh, I feel like I have a lot of information I can share with the large community around my live Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Chad Lantis, who also offer a lot of suggestions and ideas to help just gather a lot of information to come up with a good understanding of what could be the best things out there. What I'm going to do to keep these uh, videos really just consolidated and not very long running, so it'll be time sensitive for your convenience, is I'm just going to go over things that are suggestions for you to purchase for the week. I won't cover things that are not suggested for reasons of simply being a bad role. It could be not the best option for its archetype, or could simply just be a terrible archetype altogether. A good example of that is, uh, for what I would not suggest despite being a great role, would be the Impeacher 5, part of Numarchy's sidearms. Um, actually, they're one sidearm right now. It has a rangefinder, a zen moment, quick draw, and a choice between sure shot and true sight. could also run high caliber instead of quick draw if you like as well. This is a fantastic role, especially for a sidearm, because you can boost the range and stability to land all your shots very easily with higher damage at longer ranges. And quick draw and high caliber rounds are both very good options for a sidearm. You can do a lot of flinch with high caliber rounds. And quick draw is wonderful overall in the game of Destiny. So you can quickly bring out another weapon and do quick damage if needed. These sights are wonderful for aim assist. Uh, sure Shot actually is notoriously able to curve bullets around corners. Uh, which is very annoying to deal with when on the other side. But wonderful to have on your side of things if you're killing people when they're just about to go around the corner. While these perks are all wonderful for a sidearm, the archetype overall just simply doesn't cut it. The max fire rate sidearms don't really seem to have the same kill time and through a lot of testing show that they're not very good compared to other sidearms such as the Wormwood. As seen here, the Wormwood available for future Roar Cult this week. This is an archetype that is shown for sidearms to be the most optimal and best for kill times out of the legendary sidearms. Trespasser and Drake's Promise not included. We're simply talking about the stuff that are legendaries because we're referring to vendor rolls here. I wouldn't suggest buying the Wormwood because the rolls simply aren't that great. Now, these rolls for the Wormwood isn't terrible. Hitfire is pretty convenient for like scenarios where getting pushed and you need to like, not really ADS, be light on your feet. Hitfire perk is solid. Uh, Relentless Tracker and Fizz stock are convenient, but not really really optimal. And Reactive Reload is wonderful, and I've always vouched for Reactive Reload and Sidearms. But the overall perks for this weapon just really are not the best possible perks. It's not really optimal, and you could probably run better with something else out there. If you have any questions ever regarding why I didn't suggest a specific weapon or gear piece available for vendors for the week, be sure to hit me up in the comments below for this YouTube video, or you can go ahead into the live chat, twitch.tv slash chadlantis, where I stream daily for many hours a day. I do both raid help and trials of Cyrus runs with viewers for throughout the week in Destiny. Uh, I'm going to be doing that through to Destiny 2. And when Destiny 2 hits, absolutely going to be doing a lot of Destiny 2 content. And I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you may have. The order for how I'll do these videos is I'll cover all the weapons and ghosts for the vendors first. And then I'll go into specifics for classes of Titan, Warlock, and Hunter armor options. If a vendor doesn't have any good options at all, I'll show you the screen of the vendor and just explain that I didn't see any great options suggested to buy for the week. Just so you know, I didn't happen to miss the vendor or anything. So for instance, Future War Cult. For the ghosts and weapons, I don't really recommend any purchases for Future War Cult this week. For Dead Orbit, the one suggestion I have for this week is Keystone 01. This is not for PvP purposes, this is for PvE purposes, especially for stuff like raids and strikes. The Firefly perk is wonderful against a horde of enemies such as Thrall or Dregs. They're all clouded up right next to each other. Triple Tap is wonderful for ammo economy. An extended Mag helps you just continuously put out a lot of fire without having to worry about reloading that often. Extended Mag comboed with Triple Tap is not that often you're going to be reloading your weapon, which is wonderful for dealing with large waves of enemies, especially in the raids. For the Vanguard vendor, I will suggest the Teacup Tempest, despite it not being exactly the archetype of the Wormwood. As I said before, Wormwood does statistically perform better than the other sidearms out there, but the Teacup Tempest does a wonderful job as a sidearm. Until you have a perfect rolled Wormwood, the Teacup Tempest is going to be a great job for you with a Rangefinder perk and Zen Moment perk, as I covered before. Wonderful options. This has Steady Hand and not True Sight nor Sure Shot, 
While those two sites are regarded to be the best options, Steady Hand will do the job just fine for you. And the last perk here is Casket Mag, which considering the changes of sidearms for PvP and the fact you need a lot of bullets to kill somebody with a sidearm anyway in PvP, Casket Mag, Zen Moment, and Rangefinder are going to be wonderful options. At the very least, you can run Feeding Frenzy for PvE content if you want to run the Teacup Tempest anyway. That's also a really wonderful option. Another great option for the Vanguard Core Master this week is the Parthian Shot, which has Rangefinder, Outlaw, and Brace Frame, which will be the ones I would run. This weapon suggestion is especially for the people who like to shoot really long-range cross-map shooting without using a sniper rifle. Rangefinder really helps you with that because you'll have a longer range before the damage fall off starts. With this type of pulse rifle along with range rider, it's essentially you're gonna have no damage fall off for pretty much every situation. Brace frame will help a lot with stability, so you can make sure you're landing all of your bullets at the long range optimally. And while brace frame lowers your magazine size, Outlaw will make that not really an issue anymore because typically you'll be getting a headshot kill with this weapon based on how it handles. So you'll be able to get a really quick reload with Outlaw, so brace frame, becomes essentially a non-factor. The Continental is a little odd one for me. Auto rifles haven't really been performing very well. With the new patch changes, with auto rifles damage fall off being boosted at an even farther range, I still need to give auto rifles a better chance in Crucible before I really say if I suggest this one or not. It seems like things like Doctrine of Passing will still be the top dog for auto rifles in the meta for PvP. But with the roles like this one on Persistence, Perfect Balance, and Focus Fire, I really want to give this one a shot and I probably will throughout the week. If you have further inquiries regarding Continental, go ahead and drop a comment below or hit me up on the Twitch channel. By the time you do so, I probably will have this tested out and will be able to give you a better answer regarding it. The Vanguard did a pretty good job overall this week. I have four total suggestions, maybe three if the Continental doesn't play out, but the last one, regardless, will be the disassembly required. Grenades and Horseshoes is essentially a must-have for PvP. Javelin is wonderful for boosting the velocity, making it even harder for people to dodge your rocket. And Army of One is a wonderful perk because you're pretty much always going to get an unassisted kill with a rocket launcher. And the overall stats for this weapon, along with the Javelin, are really high. Most of what you look for for a rocket launcher is blast radius and velocity. This one has really good stat rolls for both of those. I wouldn't say this is the best possible rocket launcher you can get for PvP content, but similar to the suggestion of the Teacup Tempest, this is a fantastic rocket launcher to pick up until you get one with better blast radius and velocity rolls alongside of Grenades and Horseshoes perk. One thing I'll go ahead and mention real quick right now is I probably will never suggest a fusion rifle in any of these videos. The reason for that is pretty much every PvP player I talk to who uses fusion rifles regularly pretty much always say that the Saladin's Vigil is still the fusion rifle to go for, and that will never be obtainable from the vendors. You're gonna have to go to Archon's Forge, grind that out, and hope you not only get a Saladin's Vigil drop, but also has a great roll for you. For the Crucible, I still recommend the vendor roll for Palindrome. The previous one, I think overall was better. However, this still has Sure Shot, Icarus, Rifle Barrel, and Reactive Reload. With Reactive Reload activated, you can two tap enemy guardians in the Crucible. Rifle Barrel is basically a staple for this middle column on the Palindrome, as well as basically every other hand cannon out there. It simply outperforms every other perk possible in this middle column. Icarus is wonderful because every shot properly aimed in air will land with exception to lag or any other shenanigans. Sure Shot, as explained before, along with True Sight actually, are the best for aim assist in the sights department. So it basically just makes it a little bit easier to land your headshots. But be wary of the palindrome because they did nerf hand cannons with this recent patch for the Age of Triumph update to where now the range for where damage drop off starts is three meters shorter. That's actually a pretty substantial distance. And it'll take quite a bit of testing to really determine if hand cannons still are top dog and must haves. But even if they aren't, they probably still will perform just great. And this role is something you probably don't want to pass up on. The other suggestion I would have for the Crucible Vendor would be the Zero Day Dilemma. This is not for PvP usage. I really don't see how this would be amazing for PvP. However, for PvE content, having counterbalance for stability boost, a pendant magazine for even more mag size, and spray and play where you reload really fast when your mag is empty. This is wonderful when you're just gunning down hordes and hordes of enemies and things like raids, nightfall, etc. So if you like using auto rifles and raids and all that other stuff, this would probably be a wonderful option and it's unlikely you'll get a better deal than this. For New Monarchy, I'd suggest the Assembly 2. It has the max fire rate for auto rifles, which I believe is still going to be the best archetype for auto rifles out there in PvP. And it has perfect balance and counterbalance, which is amazing 
for the max fire rate auto rifles and better for auto rifles in general. It also has quick draw and sure shot, which are wonderful perks as covered previously in this video. And even if you want to use this weapon also in PvE content, it has spray and play, which as previously covered is a wonderful perk in PvE. The only other thing I would possibly suggest for Numarki would be the Impeacher 5. It has an amazing role as covered at the start of this video but keep in mind that it's not the archetype of sidearms that I think is optimal and the best out there. So if you simply just really prefer the max fire rate of sidearms where you just pull the trigger and it shoots about as fast as you can possibly pull that right trigger, it's probably going to be the best you can get out there. And looking over it, I really can't really think of a better roll option than what this Impeacher 5 has. That's going to be it for the weapons and ghost suggestions through all vendors. Now I'm going to move on to the class armor suggestions. For reference, the highest possible stat roll you can get, and by stat roll I mean intellect, discipline, strength, for helmets is 65, for gauntlets is 58, for chest pieces is 86, and for legs it's 79. For class items such as marks for titans, as well as ghosts, 35 is the highest you can get rolled. I'm not going to cover artifacts at all because none of those are being sold by any of the vendors ever. For titans at Numarchy, the closest any of the armor pieces get to a god roll, which would be like perfect highest stats, possible would be the gauntlets 58 is the highest you can possibly get for gauntlets and both stat rolls for intellect discipline are at 56 each so overall that's four numbers lower from a perfect roll if you have nothing better you can go for those but still not a god roll and nothing else from new market is even close for the crucible vendor the titan mark is a god roll perfect 35 35 Pick that up if you don't have a god roll until like discipline titan mark. All other armor pieces are fairly far from a god roll, so I simply just won't suggest them based on stats. Now obviously stats are everything for armor pieces. You also look into ammo economy, reload speed, melee attack speed versus grenade throw distance, etc. A lot of those are based on your preference on weapons you want to run, so there's no point in me really suggesting them based on those. I'll only really be suggesting armor pieces based on their stat rolls. For the Vanguard Titan, the legs are extremely close to a god roll. 78, 78, perfect you can get a 79, 79. It's two off overall from a perfect roll. Very close. So if you have nothing better, be sure to pick up the legs. Nothing else comes even close to a god roll. For Dead Orbit, nothing really comes that close to a god roll. The best you got are the Gauntlets, which are at 58 Intellect. That's a perfect roll, but 54 in the Strength, that's four below perfect roll stats. It has grenade throw distance, which is wonderful, especially if you're running sticky grenades, but overall a fairly disappointing week from Dead Orbit. For future roll cult, we're one number off from a perfect roll in a chest piece. This is actually so close, I'm gonna go ahead and say that you go ahead and get this thing. Anything within two from a perfect roll is actually probably a really good grab, and it's not gonna be that common you'll find something that close to a perfect roll. All other armor pieces from Titans are not that close to a perfect roll, but I would definitely suggest getting this chest piece. Switching gears over to Warlocks, the only thing I would really suggest from future Roar Cult would be the Bond. One number off of a God roll, very, very close. I suggest picking that up if you don't have anything better than this roll. Everything else in future Roar Cult doesn't seem to be close enough to really suggest getting. The future Roar Cult Bond was Intellect Discipline, this one is Intellect Strength. So if this fits better on your build towards tier 12 on your Guardian, you can go for that. Or if you simply don't worry about that one extra stat number, or prefer the look, etc., you can go for that. This is still fairly close to a perfect roll. For Crucible Warlock gear, the helmet is two numbers off from a perfect roll. 65 is the highest for helmets, so 65, 63, not that bad. The chest piece is five total off from a perfect roll. Kind of close, but probably wouldn't suggest buying this. You'll likely be able to get something better. The Vanguard really doesn't have any good options at all for their Warlock this week. Everything is very low on the stat numbers. Might want to do a little bit better next week at Cora Ray. The one thing I suggest for Warlocks out of New Monarchy would be the Bond. It's funny that out of three total suggested Bonds for the week, one's Intellect Discipline, one's Intellect Strength, and one is Discipline Strength. The three possible combination options. This one has a perfect 35 on Strength, but only 33 in Discipline. Two off from the total perfect roll, so it's not quite there, but if you have no other better options, here you go. <laughs> so between Intellect Discipline, Intellect Strength, or Discipline Strength option for your total setup, going towards a 12 tier build. You have three close options, none of them perfect god roll this week. And nothing else from Numarchy is nearly close enough for me to really suggest purchasing. Now, for the final class of this week's vendor review, the leg armor is fairly close, that perfect 79.79, four off total. You'll likely end up being able to find something better out there, but this is fairly close on intellect discipline rolls. The helmet is one away from a perfect god roll at 65.64. So close, but, is close enough to where you can probably get a tier 12 build 
with this helmet. Personally, I don't really like these perks for this helmet, especially not for PvP. There's no Angel of Mercy or health replenishing or pickup or anything like that, but it's solid for PvE, so take it as you will. The Crucible options for Hunters aren't that great. The Cloak is 3 off from a perfect roll, and the Boots are 5 off from a perfect roll. You probably get better eventually. I mean, those are fairly high if you have nothing better, but not really anything crazy to look at. My boy Kate 6 coming a little bit better. The cloak is only two away from a perfect roll. However, nothing else is really that close to really be crazy about. For Dead Orbit, the boots are four off from a perfect roll, which is okay. The cloak is four off from a perfect roll as well. However, the chest armor is fantastic, only two away from a perfect roll. Considering the other options that have been out there, this is pretty great. The only problem with the chest armor is it increases arc armor, which we all know Blade Answer is a pretty terrible subclass, even still, because Bungie loves nerfing it. And for the final vendor this week, we're back to where we started, Future War Cult. Unfortunately, we're ending on a little bit of disappointment. There are no good options for the armor for Hunters at the Future War Cult this week. So that's all of the reviews for the vendor stuff for weapons, ghosts, armors for all three subclasses, etc. It's for the first week of Age of Triumph. Hopefully this video helped you in some way. And I'll be looking to do this kind of video weekly moving forward to try to help you out with these weekly rolls. Thank you so much for being you, and thank you as always for watching. Adios.